started. Good day. My name is Veronica Bjorkman. I'm the Director of Family Outreach and Support here at Columbia. We are so happy and excited that you are able to join us for our fifth webinar of the 2023 Summer Webinar Series. We are thrilled to collaborate and co-host this year's summer series with our colleagues in the Office of Undergraduate Student Life. In July and August on Fridays at 10 a.m. Eastern, our offices will host a webinar leading up to our new student orientation program, otherwise called NSOP, and our family orientation. A few housekeeping items before we begin. The information discussed in today and throughout our webinar series is specific to undergraduate students in Columbia College, Columbia Engineering, and their families. Our panelists will present for about 30 to 40 minutes, and we will leave time at the end for questions. In the Zoom webinar platform, you may ask a question via the Q&A submission box. Given the large number of participants in today's webinar, unfortunately, we will not be able to answer every question, but we want you to still reach out if you have questions at the end. And we are also recording this webinar for families who could not make it, and it will be available in a few days on our YouTube channel, at Family at Columbia. So let's get started. Joining us today from the Office of Undergraduate Student Life is the Assistant Director for Student Engagement, Nestor Hernandez. Hi, Nestor. Hi, everyone. Good morning. I would also like to welcome our Administrative Coordinator for the Office of Student and Family Support, Joanne Neal. Good morning, Joanne. Hello, everyone. Welcome. And of course, our Associate Dean of Student and Family Support, Matthew Potashnik. Good morning, everyone, and happy Friday. Yes. And now I would like to welcome our special guest panelists. Joining us today is Haley Carson, the Associate Director for Residential Life and Special Interest Communities. Hi, Haley. Good morning. Lorena Prosco, the Senior Director for Housing Services and Student Center Operations. Hi, Lorena. Good morning, everybody. Christina Hernandez, the Executive Director for Communications. Good morning, Christina. Hello, everyone. And last but certainly not least, Rosie Fernandez, the Manager of Dining Plans and Flex Accounts. Good morning, Rosie. Good morning. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to pass it off to Haley. Awesome. So good morning again, everyone. Um, I'm going to start us off by talking about residential life and the support that our office provides your students. So when your students arrive on campus, there will be a plethora of residential life staff and student leaders to welcome them and support them throughout their time here at Columbia. Um, so I just want to first start off by providing an overview of our office. Um, something you may not know is that everyone that works within residential life um, and the folks that serve on the on-call team, we all live on campus. So that means that the majority of our residence halls here on campus have a live-in staff member, which is really cool um, and, and really handy to, to support our students. So residential life is comprised of resident assistants, also known as RAs, um, residence hall directors, also known as RHDs, um, associate directors and assistant directors, also known as ADs, um, as well as a director and an executive director. So RA, um, RAs, resident advisors, um, they are students that live on each floor within the first year residence halls. Um, they're there to help residents build connections with each other, assist in mediating conflicts as they arise, especially for those that will be living with you know, a roommate for the first time. Um, they will be there to connect residents to resources and ensure that the community is safe by enforcing policies within the guide to living, which is something that your students all agree to when they agree to live on campus. Um, so residence hall directors, RHDs, um, also know uh, their RHDs are, are full-time live-in professional staff members that directly supervise the RAs. Um, we also connect residents to resources, we meet with residents directly, and we discuss concerns, um, host programs, serve in an on-call rotation. Um, so we're, we're kind of, we're, we're doing it all on campus. Um, so next within our structure, we have associate directors and director levels, um, which are referred to as ADs. So we directly supervise the residence hall directors and we kind of oversee a larger area. So for example, um, I oversee four full-time residence hall directors and one graduate hall director. Um, and I really live and work within the upper class area. Um, prior to the upper class area, though, I was working in the first year area for three years. So I'm very familiar with the first year area. I'm very passionate about the first year area. Um, so associate directors also oversee large level concerns um, and, and large scale initiatives. So 
Um, if there ever is a concern, we also do parental notifications if um, and when necessary. So um, we do chat with parents at times um, when, when needed. Um, finally, I'd like to talk to you about our tiered on-call structure and what that is and, and what that even means. Um, so we have four levels of on-call support, three of which are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Um, we're always on call. Um, RAs are on the first level and they serve on call every day from 9 p.m. to 8 a.m. This is our one layer that is not 24 hours a day. That's because our RAs are students and humans and they, they have things going on, um, but they are on on those larger hours where folks typically do need more support or assistance. Um, so each community has an RA on duty every night during the academic year, um, except for winter break, which most of our students are gone anyway. Um, residents will be provided the RA on duty number during their first night on campus, and it's also posted all over their building. Um, if they, for some reason, don't get it at their, their first floor meeting, it should be by every elevator shaft. It should be on their RA's door. Um, it will be around for them to get later on if they miss it. And residents can call the RA on duty for a variety of things, such as a noise complaint, a resource referral, um, any help with the situation of maybe, you know, something they're unsure of how to manage. Maybe it's their first time having a difficult conversation with their next door neighbor. Um, whatever it is, it runs the gamut. We're there to help. So when the RA is on duty, um, they're really there to ensure the community is safe. Um, they address policy violations and they document any maintenance concerns they come across. Um, RAs do not, do not, do not handle high level incidents. Um, they defer to the RHD on call, which is our first layer of um, full time staff members. Um, and so they call them to assist. So the RHD on call level, like I mentioned, is operative 24 7, 365 days a year and is used for emergencies um, with a quick response time, which is why the number isn't widely spread. Um, typically, RAs in public safety will reach out to the RHD on call to assist with the situation to provide immediate support to residents. Um, support could include, you know, checking out on a student that maybe got transported to the hospital um, and then providing assistance by communicating with the student's advising dean um, or, you know, helping navigate a larger level concern that maybe has come up. Um, above the RHD level is the AD and the Dean on call layers, which I've already mentioned. Um, and these two layers provide support to those who are directly meeting with the student. So the RHD on call and, and maybe sometimes even the RA on duty. Um, if your student at any time has an emergent situation, um, the best place for you as a parent to call is public safety. Um, public safety has a great relationship with our team and they have our number for emergencies. They're also just a great central center that knows where to send you if you, you know, need something specific. Um, their team is super knowledgeable and um, our on-call structure, you know, can assist getting your student support as quickly as possible. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, so we have a variety of ways for your student to meet other classmates as well as get involved in the residential life, um, you know, community and also like having leadership opportunities. So first things first, attending programs is a great way for residents to meet new people and begin building friendships. Um, within residential life, we offer specific programs and social opportunities through Columbia 101, um, which is a program that aims to connect students through fun social activities, but also aims to help them learn about resources that are available at Columbia for them to use. Um, and not only Columbia, like the greater New York City area, we want them to succeed here. And that's really what this program is all about. Um, additionally, RAs and residence hall directors also host floor-wide and building-wide programs that help students within each residence hall meet each other. Um, so that is also a really great way for students to get involved. Um, we have leadership opportunities available that students that live in the residence halls can join um, each community. So, you know, we've got John Jay, Hartley, Bollock, um, Fernald, Carmen, all of these buildings have a hall council. Um, hall council is governed by an organization called ROLO, also known as the Residence Hall Leadership Organization. Um, in September, each community, so if your student's living in Fernald's, John Jay, Hartley Wallach, or Carmen, um, there will be an election period happening. So students will be able to elect a board, um, and that 
that group of students will be able to host events for their community. Um, this is really a great way if, if your student is at all interested in event planning or advocacy, it's a great way for them to get involved in the community they are living in. Um, and, you know, if your student is interested in being part of Hall Council, they should look out for digital communication um, from their Hall Director during the month of September. And, and even on move-in, we'll start talking about it. We're, we're really excited for it. Um, in residential life, we understand the importance of merging classroom experience with the residential experience, which is why we bring academic components into the residence halls. Um, within the first year area community, we have a faculty in residence. Um, his name is Professor John Kamisis. Um, he is the chair of the electrical engineering department and co-director of the makerspace here on campus. Um, Professor Kamisis and his family work within the first year area residential life team um, to create a variety of programs throughout the year specifically for first year students. So Professor Kamisis invites students into his home um, for dinners, for dessert, for whatever it is he is planning. Um, he wants to be involved and engaged and such a great resource. Um, additionally, Rolo hosts study sessions near final exam periods where faculty members um, come into the residence hall. So um, in our great main lounges in each building, um, we have faculty members that come and host their final review session for finals. Um, it's a really great time because a lot of our students come down in their pajamas, they're tired, they're ready for finals and break. Um, and it's a really cool way to engage with your professor. So that is awesome. Um, lastly, the first year area residential life staff works closely with offices such as the library, um, academic integrity, and the Center for Student Advising. And we bring in those staff members as well into the residence halls to, to lead workshops for our students. So um, we really want to make all of these offices as accessible as possible to our first year students. The, the work they have to do is really just heading down to their main floor or their basement level to get to their main lounge. Awesome. So now we're going to talk about safety in the residence halls, which I'm sure is on all of your minds. Um, each first year residence hall is staffed by a Columbia University public safety officer um, who's responsible for ensuring the safety of the residents that live there by making sure that everyone that entering the building has access to be there. So if they shouldn't be there, they shouldn't be in entering the building. Um, residence hall access is on the CU ID of each resident. So once your student gets here, they will get a physical ID that will have their picture on it. That will be their entryway into, you know, the dining halls, into buildings. It's something they'll always have on their person. Um, that card will have access to their residence hall. Um, additionally, staff such as residential life, so myself, public safety, facilities, housing, um, we also um, must swipe to gain access to residence halls. So, um, you know, there's there's always going to be kind of a log of who is in our buildings, and that really is to keep our students as safe as possible. Um, if an individual does not have an active CUID with access to the residence halls, they will not be permitted into the building unless they've gone through a proper sign-in procedure. Um, all guests who are not residential, undergraduate, Columbia College, or School of Engineering students must be signed in by eligible resident to gain access. Um, so if, you know, you are coming to visit your student later on in the fall, they can just sign you in. That's not a problem. Um, I do want to make note, though, that minors are not allowed into the residence hall unless they are accompanied by a legal parent or guardian. Um, and I, I want to make that super clear, as we have seen many a family send their, you know, the, the students, little brother or sister, off to come visit them in the residence halls. Um, if they are a minor, they cannot come in without their legal guardian. So please keep that in mind as you plan um, for the year. There are exceptions to this um, through athletics and admissions. They have a specific process that allows minors to enter the residence halls as current students host those minors, but that really is the only exception. Um, and that really is just for the safety, right? We wanna protect minors and, and we wanna keep everyone as safe as possible. Um, there's a strong public safety presence around campus, not only within the residence halls and campus proper, but this also includes foot patrol and several neighboring streets, as well as car patrol of the Morningside Heights neighborhood, which is where Columbia sits and where your students will be living. 
Um, additionally, public safety also offers a variety of initiatives that students can participate in, um, such as an escort program, free via rides, um, the intercampus shuttle, and their situational awareness training. So more info about those programs can be found on the public safety website. Um, your students will also learn more about them during new student orientation programs week. Um, lastly, as I mentioned earlier, we have a robust on-call support system, and our staff is here to ensure your students are getting the support they need and the safety that, you know, we agree to as your students move on to campus. Um, awesome. So now I will turn it over to Lorena with housing. Thank you, Lee. And I'm really excited to represent the Columbia housing team. So let me talk a little bit about um, what housing does. And the same thing that uh, Kaylee was mentioning, uh, our goal in housing is to provide students with a safe and supportive environment as they pursue their academic goals and transition into independent living in an urban environment. We have uh, 38 buildings on the Morningside campus and we provide housing to about 6,000 undergraduate students. We offer a variety of living styles that include corridor style buildings. We also have suite and apartment style units. Each building has a combination of single and double rooms. For restrooms, we have single use restrooms and we also have shared gender restrooms. We offer a variety of amenities, including an esports gaming uh, room, we have music practice rooms, we have common areas, bike storage, etc. And the Columbia Housing Team is composed of three groups. Uh, the Housing Services a group that focuses on assignments, the Operations and Systems team, and the Guest Services group, which is our customer facing team and the one students will interact with the most. Um, our office is located in Harley Hall, and I will go more into detail about the 24-hour hospitality desk later. So let's talk about on-campus housing and eligibility. First-year students are required to live on campus. However, this is optional for upper class students. All CCNC students are guaranteed four years of housing provided that they continue to meet certain eligibility criteria. And that includes being a full-time student, that they don't move off campus and others. Um, so basically, as long as you stay with us, we'll make sure to provide a space for you. So how can you learn about uh, the residence halls? And uh, before you get here, so please visit our building pages on our website to learn more about the building amenities. You can see pictures of student rooms and more. You will be able to see the list of building details. And we also have videos that display firsthand student living experiences in the residence halls. So next we have a list of what is in the rooms. The rooms are furnished. We have a bed frame, uh, extra long twin mattress, a chair, chest of drawers, a wardrobe or closet, and a desk. Uh, the tip here is do not bring extra furniture. From my personal experience living in New York City for 15 years, I can tell you that less is more. And that you will appreciate having more space to move around than having items just cluttering the area. You don't need necessarily need to bring everything with you. There are local vendors uh, where you can find the, the supplies that you will need on the daily basis. Um, also, uh, it will make it easier for moving and uh, move out experience for students and families. Uh, find out what to bring on housing.columbia.edu slash what to bring. Now, Preparing for life in the residence halls. Laundry. We have free laundry facilities located in all of our buildings. All that students need is their own basket or bag and supplies. Residents need to be conscious that it's a shared space and shared equipment, so clothes need to be picked up at the end of the cycle and machine, machines should not be uh, overstuffed, etc. It is extremely important to know the laundry basics before moving to campus. We do have a how to do laundry video on our website, so please check it out. Cleaning. Room cleaning is the responsibility of each of the students as they're moving into independent living. Uh, bathroom cleaning, however, uh, the responsibility varies depending on the building. So please check the building pages. And the tip here is if the students are sharing space, uh, they do need to have a conversation with the roommate about their responsibilities and expectations. And the sooner that this conversation happens, the better it will be for all parties. Now, our Harley Hospitality Desk is located in Harley Hall. 
is staffed 24 seven during the academic year to provide support to all of our residential students. Uh, we offer support in person or by phone or email. Uh, and the services include troubleshooting uh, room and building access issues, placing work orders, and we can also help students connect with other campus resources as needed. The Guide to Living is a collection of policies and procedures related to living on campus. Examples of some of these are the guest policy, the prohibited items, furniture, smoking, etc. So basically, when in doubt, consult the Guide to Living. This is a helpful resource for parents and students. Now, let's prepare for check-in. Here are some important dates. Our international first-year students will be checking in on Saturday, August 26, from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, the general first-year check-in date is on August 27th, uh, from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. as well. And our transfer combined plan and exchange of students will be checking in on August 29th from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, also, other helpful resources our website, housing.colombia.edu. We have a web page that has all the check in information that would be helpful for all of you to prepare to arrive to campus. Also, for students only, there is the housing portal where they have to log in with their credentials and like, they'll, have, they'll find their their information about which building they're assigned to and the room number. Also, if they have a roommate, the information will be there. Uh, students will also be receiving emails from us with some uh, information that is very important uh, prior to arrival. And uh, generally, uh, Instagram and Facebook, our social media pages have helpful and quick information for all of you to uh, see. And uh, from the Columbia Housing team, I want to let you know that we are looking forward to seeing you all soon. Now I'm gonna pass it on to Christina uh, for the next portion of the presentation. Thanks, Lorena. Um, once again, my name is Christina Hernandez. I work on the dining communications team. We are so excited to welcome you to Columbia University. Our team can't wait to greet students on campus in just a few weeks. I am super lucky today because I get to talk to you all about food. So Columbia Dining is a university run department a team of professionals who love food. Our lead chefs have received training at esteemed culinary institutions. We have a lead management team who work on the floor in each of the units. They're there to support staff and to assist students. These are the people that are there to answer questions. If students um, can't find something and need help, so we really want to encourage students to seek them out, um, introduce themselves, and you know, and, and find them when they have a problem or a question. We also have a registered dietitian on staff, Alexa Gandara. Alexa is available to consult with students on dietary restrictions or allergies. Um, she importantly oversees working with our culinary teams on menu planning and is also responsible for a menu labeling system throughout the dining halls. So when a student comes in for a meal, they'll see at each station what is being served and there's an ID key labeling any um, any allergy um, or, or other dietary restrictions like vegan, vegetarian, dairy, et cetera. And then finally, the heart of our organization are our culinary teams who work in the kitchen, at the serving stations, at the cashier stations, or on the floor. And they, these are the faces that your students will get to know every day and be part of their new campus family. So the food, we take good food seriously. Um, proudly, we were ranked among the top 25 um, by the Princeton Re Review for best campus food. Um, this is an important distinction because the ranking is compiled based on student input. Um, in fact, the pictures that you see here are real um, meals served in our dining halls. And these are real quotes from students. Um, again, we'd love to hear what the team is doing right, but just as important, we want to hear how we can be doing things better. Um, there are different menus offered at each location every day, so there's always a variety to choose from. Menus are posted on our website so students can plan based on their schedule and what they're in the mood for. And there's always something for everyone. All of our menus include vegan options, gluten-free options, and halal options. And again, Alexa works with our culinary team to ensure that all of the menus are labeled with um, the according um, allergy and dietary preferences. 
So we know Columbia students are busy and um, Columbia Dining provides lots of flexible options to meet their needs. Here are the stats. Um, we offer five all you care to eat dining halls, plus two locations where students can get one set meal for a swipe. We also have three retail cafes that offer specialty coffees, pastries, and other to-go items, um, plus one 24-hour micro market and three locations through the Columbia Barnard Exchange. So this makes 24 hours of food options for Columbia students to have access when they are on campus. Now I want to turn it over to my colleague, Rosie, who's going to tell you a little bit more about how the plans work. Good morning, my name is Rosie and I manage the student meal plans and flex account here at Columbia. Meal plans are mandatory for all first year students. So your students should have chosen a plan when they uh, applied for housing in May. If they did not choose a plan, then they'll be automatically assigned to plan two, which consists of 15 meals plus 125 dining dollars. Plans are optional for upper class students, but we find that many students remain enrolled in the program because of its convenience and it's a great way for them to connect with their peers. Uh, one meal swipe is equivalent to one visit or one meal. Um, students can choose to dine in, or we also offer the option of a token, which serves as an exchange for a to-go container. Uh, your plan also comes with dining dollars and flex. This is a great addition to the meal swipes and it just rounds out your meal plan. The dining dollars is a tax-free account, um, a declining a balance account, which they can use to make purchases in our retail locations, such as coffee, snacks, and more. Uh, flex dollars, on the other hand, is taxable, but they are accepted in many off-campus restaurants, including um, you can make purchases at, uh, through Grubhub and use that as a payment method. Um, uh, if you, let's say, run out of dining dollars or flex, you can just go on SSOL and you can increase value to both dining dollars and flex. Simply include your uni, your password, allow one hour, and then the charges are included with tuition. Um, if, uh, let's say, you don't have your ID card, it's very important for you to have your card at all times because your meals, dining dollars, and flex are linked to this card. So that's the only way for you to access the dining halls. Students that did not, um, they're not comfortable with the plan they chose, they'll be able to change their meal plan beginning September 5th through the 19th. There'll be a change form available on our website. There is a $30 change fee to submit um, that change from one plan to the other. Um, you can also review all of our different plans on our website for both upper class and first years. And if you have any other questions, uh, I, I'm more than happy to chat with both parents and students. You can email me at rf214 at columbia.edu. And we look forward to seeing you all on August 27th during the resource uh, theater. Thanks, Rosie. So as much as we love good food, we also like to have a good time. And Columbia Dining is known for um, special events. In fact, the team organizes over 100 events um, during the course of the academic year from small to absolutely out of this world. Um, sometimes it might be uh, just a theme menu, um, or we um, have several marquee events during the year. Um, one of note is a food battle between all of our dining halls featuring a celebrity Jeff, um, chef judge alongside a panel of students. So a lot of fun things to look forward to that bring students together and offer a break from their academic um, schedule and um, just monotony break during the week. There's lots of ways to stay in the loop about what's cooking on campus. Um, we are on social media on Instagram and Facebook at Columbia Dining, where you can see tons of fun food pics, event highlights, and more. Um, on our website, dining.columbia.edu, there are daily menus and hours of operation. Um, plus, we have a text messaging system called The Dish, where you can sign up to receive exclusive info about events and other breaking news. Um, you can also share feedback with our team through all of these channels. And as I mentioned, feedback is really important to our program. 
um, because we wanna make sure students are well-fed and happy. So you can send us a message on Instagram, um, on our website, there's a feedback form to send um, any questions or comments, or um, we also through our text messaging system can receive messages um, at each location. So um, again, we really encourage students to reach out to our team and let us know how we're doing. Um, and I think I'm gonna turn it back over to Veronica now um, to see if there are any questions that our teams can answer for you. Wonderful, thank you so much for all the helpful information. It looks like we do have some questions coming in. So um, we have a question specifically about the change in air conditioning um, for all of, for, for, for air conditioners being in the, the freshman halls. And so um, Lorena, could you speak just a little bit about that and, and the change and then um, will they have the ability to still open the window or in the winter, um, how that will work? Can you speak a little bit about that? Sure, so the AC units that we are installed in, um, in uh, John Jay and Wallet for first years will, um, are, are permanently installed units, which means that um, the windows will not be able to open. Um, and also the, the way the permanent installation means that um, they're airtight. That way there's no um, air, or, you know, when it gets a little bit colder, that air will not be coming in uh, into the space. But yes, um, the windows will not be able to be opened. Okay, okay. We have um, a question, you know, there's a lot of our students that come from far away. Um, and so a lot of times they want to ship boxes of things. Can we talk about the process for that and, and how that works and the dates and the address? Where can that all that be found? Lorena, would you like me to answer that question? Sure. Yep, um, on the housing website um, at housing.columbia.edu. Um, you'll see right under um, the main banner image, there's a button that says how to ship item, items to campus like a pro. And that page outlines how um, you can send um, mail and packages to campus. Um, there is a student mail center located in the lower level of Ween Hall, which is a residence hall on East Campus, which is just across the street on Amsterdam Avenue. That is where all residential students receive mail and packages. Um, students may not receive anything directly to their residence halls. Um, this page outlines the format for addresses. Um, it is everything is to be addressed to the Student Mail Center at 70 Morningside Drive. Um, the second address line should include the student's uni, which they have already been assigned, and their building code, which you can find um, linked on this page. You can start sending packages now to campus. And the Columbia Mail team is working on a package pre-delivery program where most of the items received, if received before August 15th, are eligible for direct delivery to students' rooms. So that way it will be there waiting for you. Um, and then after that, um, students will receive email notifications when items have been received at the mail center um, and are available for pickup. And this includes USPS mail as well. One important note is that there's sometimes a little bit of a lag, particularly like with Amazon, where you may see in your account um, something being listed as delivered, but that is oftentimes just when Amazon has scanned it, like in their shipping palette, that's not necessarily when it's been unpacked in the Columbia Mail Center. So again, we encourage students to wait until they've received the email notification from Columbia Mail that an item is available for them to go and pick up. Um, Veronica, did I cover everything? Yeah, in the you did a really good job. Okay. You did a really good job. Um, we have several questions about um, kind of preparing for the fall. So students want to know how do they get in contact with their roommate prior to moving in? So if they log into the housing portal, they'll be able to see what room and building they are assigned to. Uh, if they are, if they have roommates, they'll have the roommates information there. Uh, there's a way to communicate via the portal if they would like, uh, or you know, they can just send a quick email and get in touch with the person. Wonderful, wonderful. 
Can you kind of um, speak to the kitchens in the residence halls and in the um, brownstones and SICs? Is it a kitchenette style? Um, are there other appliances in there? Are electric kettles allowed? Things like that. Can we have someone speak about that? Yes, of course. So uh, in the residence halls, the every building varies. <laughs> so uh, there's not one standard for every single building. Uh, so that's, I would definitely suggest uh, going to our website to check each building and the amenities that each building has and the list of uh, details also for each of the buildings. Um, what I can say is that for first year buildings in uh, Carmen, Bernold, uh, John Jay and Wallet, the kitchens do not have refrigerators. Uh, typically first year students have the meal plans. So there's, and the, uh, the kitchens have uh, stoves and they have ovens and uh, that's what we have available in the kitchen lounges for the first years. In other buildings, depends, uh, there, it varies. Some of them in smaller buildings do have refrigerators uh, in, because they are not largely, largely shared you know, by 50 uh, or so students. So it, it just, I would say, please check the, our building pages just to make sure that you see what each building has. Veronica, I'd like to add something as well. Yeah, of course. Um, for those that don't have um, apartment style, which is all of your students coming in as first years, um, in their room, if they want a microwave, the only way to have a microwave in your room while respecting the guide to living is having a micro fridge, which is a fridge and a microwave that are connected. Um, it is run through Columbia. I believe they'll be receiving an email about it shortly if they haven't already. Um, but that is the only university approved microwave they can have in their bedroom. So please keep that in mind. Do not buy a separate microwave. Um, we will ask them to remove it. Thank you for that. Um, you bring you bring up a really good point. Um, there's a lot of folks asking questions. Are the the rules that apply to the residence halls are is the app is the information applicable to the special interest communities and the brownstones? Is it like for example, are there um, different ways to swipe in? Is there a campus sa safety person in those buildings, or is it a little bit different? That's a great question. Um, it, it's different. It's different in every building. Um, but for our brownstones, which um, none of your first years will be living in, they all will be living kind of on the campus proper. Um, it is a swipe system. So only the students that live in that building, that brownstone, have access to the brownstone. Um, obviously, in addition, residential life, their RA has access, but um, not everyone on the street will have access. So brownstones, while they don't have guards, there are other measures of safety that we take. Perfect. Perfect. Um, we have, let's see, we have some other questions coming in. Um, you mentioned a lot, Christina, about the special events that dining um, hosts and uh, and all the cool things that go on. And I know that your social media is amazing, but how do students get involved with those kind of events um, besides just attending? Like, for example, I know that you had some judges at some of your events for contests and stuff. Is there anyone specifically they should reach out to your office about? Um, that's a great question, Veronica. We love working really closely with students in a variety of ways. Um, we're actively involved with the various student councils on campus. And um, together we have monthly dining advisory committee meetings where the council send representatives and they collect feedback from their constituencies and um, bring it to the team and we work together on ideas. So that's a great way to get involved is just by getting involved in the different campus organizations. Um, anytime a student has an idea or a question or wants to be involved in something, again, I encourage them to um, find the managers that are very visible out in the units every day on the floor. Um, and then again, by following us on social media, um, and we, we have a newsletter, a monthly newsletter that students will receive, we will highlight all of the upcoming events and the things that are going on. So there are lots of great ways to, to keep, um, keep in the loop on the activities and to get involved. Sure. Thank you. It looks like um, a lot of folks are planning on coming um, for, for move in and for homecoming and family orientation and special events on campus. Um, our parents are wondering, are they able to eat in the dining halls with their students? Rosie, do you want to explain about the, um, the guest swipes up with the meal plans? 
um, each student is issued guest meals. Um, I know during COVID, um, we were restricted and we weren't able to have guests come into campus. I'm not sure if those terms have changed, but um, they are issued complimentary guest meals, which should allow um, parents to, to come into the dining hall using those guest wipes. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Um, Haley, can you talk a little bit about student involvement? And I know we, we touched base on Hall Council and Rolo, but how do students really get involved? Are there weekly meetings? Um, how, how do they build a community within the residence halls and make friends? Most definitely. Yeah, so Hall Council, I can talk about that briefly and then talk about a few other things. But Hall Council is something that whether or not you are elected to be in a position, um, every week the meeting is open to any resident. So you can bring your event planning ideas, you can bring an issue you're seeing in the halls, you can bring any type of point of advocacy that you would like to see change as a member of the residence hall. Um, that is a great way. Another really great way just to get involved is making sure that you're communicating with your RA, um, your resident advisor. Your RA, it's their role to plan events for, for the students that live on their floor. So they want to hear from their students. They want to engage and they have funding to put things together. So, you know, they're really hoping that their residents will come to them. So I think that's a great way. Um, another great thing um, is, is just going to the student activities fair, which um, they will learn all about during orientation. Um, that is a place where they can get to know all of the student organizations here on campus. So maybe if they don't um, want the, the community in their residence halls, they are still going to find it on campus somewhere. Um, it's just an added bonus when it comes from their residence hall. Thank you so much. Um, we have several students asking if there's any kind of storage space that's available or what you would recommend if they have um, storage needs. So for storage, uh, what I would recommend is looking at vendors, whether they're local vendors or, um, uh, you know, uh, countrywide vendors that, that can come and uh, help with their belongings. Uh, towards move out, I once students contact the vendors, the vendors have to be escorted into the space by the student and just make sure that everything is packed up properly and removed from the space. Uh, so yes, as students have the opportunity to reach out a vendor that will work best for their needs. Thank you so much. Um, I think we have time for one more question and Rosie, I'm gonna ask it to you. I know we talked about the, the, or the um, meal plan change period. Um, but do you have like a general suggestion on how students can kind of manage or keep track of their meal swipes is can they log on online and see where they're at um and do parents have the ability to put more money on the card or does it need to be the student yeah so students can manage their usage by logging on to student services online there's a feature there that's um, labeled columbia card and it'll give you a breakdown of the usage um, for the semester you choose the month and it'll give you the usage for meals, dining dollars, flex. And you can also, that's the same uh, platform that you would use to add value. If the parent has the student's user and password, they are able to go online um, via SSOL and um, add value. But if they do not, they can just contact me directly. Um, they would provide a credit card number um, and then process the deposit through me. So they would have to prepay for whatever amount they want to replenish both flex and dining dollars. Okay. Well, listen, we're unfortunately out of time, um, but if you still have additional questions, you can reach out to us at ugrad-family at columbia.edu or ugrad student life at columbia.edu. A big thank you to our panelists and for you joining us today. And if you haven't already, please register and join us for our next webinar, which is Friday, August 11th at 10 a.m. to learn more about academics and student advising. Take good care, everyone.